So our first story of the day is going to be about Tezos. And as I said, the latest development coming from the Tezos project is that they will be adopting Chainlink, yes, Chainlink, Sergey, to the moon as their Oracle provider. That will serve, so Chainlink is going to be serving uh, their, you know, their smart contracts and helping to bring a USD peg stablecoin to the network, right? That is overall their goal. They're going to be utilizing Chainlink as their Oracle on chain to get off chain data. And their overall goal is to build a stablecoin system and a stablecoin pegged to their network. Now, Chainlink, whose token LINK link is one of the best performing assets in the crypto space over the past two years, shout out to 4chan, is a so-called Oracle project, right? For those of you who don't know, an Oracle project's aim is to connect blockchains to actual real world data, right? Or off-chain data, which is all, you know, which is not stored or derived on the blockchain itself. And it is you know, designed to deliver that data to a smart contract operating on the blockchain so that that smart contract can reference uh, data that is not stored on chain on the blockchain, right? Smart con so for example, a basic smart contract or your or your your default smart contract on Ethereum, for example, or on or, or on Tezos or on Tron or on whatever platform uh, is going to be looking at data over here on chain data over here on chain and then executing an action on chain right approving or denying something or moving funds around or whatever um but once you start you know what you know th and that works for like simple things when you're only worried about you know well how much ethereum quantity of ethereum is in this wallet how much quantity of ethereum is in this wallet right okay if a is larger than b transfer b to a right you can do that stuff but now that we are more concerned, and this is, of course, something that we cover with our trading all of the time, right? We, I am a USD-centric based trader, right? So I don't stack sats. I have, a, I have an investment in Bitcoin that I am happy with, and I regularly add to that through dollar cost averaging. Uh, but I treat my, my trading portfolio in terms of USD because that is what I currently pay my bills with. So I trade to increase my dollar value, so I take action based upon that. So, for example, I will hedge my Bitcoin that is in my trading account with a future short contract. And I don't care if that hedge loses money because I don't lose money. I lose BTC, for example, on Bybit. If I open up a short for, let's say, $50,000 and price moves up 3%, well, I have lost 3% of whatever X amount of BTC was that position size, but my dollar value stays the same, right? Because going short 1X is hedging. You're, you're, you're flat in dollar terms because you're already holding that BTC, thus you're exposed. And I, of course, I've covered this in, in dozens and dozens and dozens of videos explaining the under, underlying hedging mechanics. Uh, we have uh, we have tons of videos dedicated to this, this concept in the premium trading group. It's something that we talk about all the time. Uh, so if you're new to the channel and this concept is new, new to you, just real, just remember, just understand, put this in your head for later. And for those of you guys who have been with us for, for, for months or years, you guys already know, and you're tired of me kicking a dead horse. Like that horse is way dead right now. I just want people to understand hedging works. Um, or how it works and how you can make it work for you and protect your dollar value, particularly in situations like right now. Um, if you're holding Bitcoin, your spot long and your dollar value, i.e. how much money you can trade your Bitcoin in will fluctuate based on the market value of BTC USD. Simple concept. If you then open up a 1x short utilizing that same Bitcoin as collateral, you are now flat, meaning the quantity of Bitcoin that you have will change depending on the success or failure of your trade, but the dollar value will be the same. So that is how you can lose Bitcoin but you have less Bitcoin, but that Bitcoin is more valuable per unit of Bitcoin now. Thus, the dollar value stays the same. Simple math, simple concept, but something that I go over all the time. Uh, so again, getting back to this, Chainlink Oracle is designed to give, transmit, beam, if you would, off-chain data onto an on-chain network. So the smart contract can now reference, for example, what is the exchange rate for Ethereum USD? So now we're not just interested in the quantity of FUSD, uh, Ethereum over here and the quantity of Ethereum over here. What's the dollar value? Of the ethereum over here and what's the dollar value of this ethereum over here and what if we want to get more complicated what if it's not just the dollar what if it's not just ethereum over here what if it's tron right we want to trade we want to do some smart contract between two participants in a smart contract where one participant has ethereum and one participant has tron they're able to do some kind of atomic swap or deal with some stable coin in between that is able to compensate because there's dollar valuation and thus we have to know what's the quantity of dollars that this ethereum over here is worth what's the quantity of dollars that this trx over here is is worth and if one is greater than the other transfer the difference to third wallet which is like maybe a community wallet or maybe my wallet hopefully uh worth of some stable coin 
right? So we can do these things and you can just imagine the complex processes that we can build once we begin oracleizing data so that blockchains can reference off-chain data. Of course, this opens up lots of opportunities for bad oracles and bad data, but as with all things, constant improvement onwards, crypto onwards. With that being said, <laughs> with that being said, now what, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, so as I've talked about, oracles are going to allow the developers of Tezos here is build smart contracts to incorporate off-chain data or in this particular case to access external APIs or trigger off-chain settlements. Uh, Chainlink's profile, of course, is continuing to rise in the cryptocurrency industry. And I would say that that is largely thanks to a slew of new integrations that they've incorporated on-chain over the past 18 months. Uh, you know, Chainlink is currently used in everything from powering pricing feeds that support decentralized finance on networks like Ethereum to platforms offering aviation insurance, sports memorabilia, and now perhaps even a stable coin on the Tezos network. Now, Tezos in and of itself, of course, is a top 10 among cryptos of buy market capitalization. And this recent announcement from them has revealed that they will be utilizing Chainlink to access critical off-chain resources to help power their on-chain applications. As Tezos described here in their announcement, integrating Chainlink as their Oracle provider will, in their opinion, cement Tezos as the advanced ecosystem that they, are, that they want to be for developing next-generation decentralized applications or a DEPS, as we lovingly call them. Now, Chainlink's co-founder, Sergey Nazarov, chimed in on the news, stating that Tezos is one of the most advanced blockchains in the industry, and it offers many unique features that make it appealing not only to institutions, but also to developers to work on. So you typically say good things about your partners. Now, he explained, he went on to explain how the Tezos ecosystem is with this step making a big leap forward in its evolution as a smart contract platform through the integration of Chainlink as the Oracle that will serve up Tezos based dApps uh, information off chain data uh, to create a spectrum of valuable real world resources which exist off chain. All right, so integrating Chainlink as the Oracle provider is not a small task. And in this announcement, Tezos described that two teams of developers that work for Tezos are going to be responsible for doing so, for making this actually happen. You have Smart Chain Arena. They're a team of devs who created the Tezos Smart Contract Programming Language, Smart Pi, and Cryptonomic, who develops Tezos tools like their Galleon Wallet and Nautilus Cloud Service. So these two teams together are going to be leading the charge on Chainlink integration because it's not, you know, it's not drag and drop. You gotta do the code. Uh, so, uh, Cryptonomics, uh, Cryptonomic is, is based in New York City, and they are known for building finance applications, uh, as well as advising enterprise players on their blockchain strategies and builds. So, they've got a little bit of a pedigree there. Meanwhile, SmartPy, as I said earlier, is the smart contract uh, programming language unique to Tezos. Uh, the Pi refers to its architecture. Uh, it's it's based on a Python library, which means that contracts can freely inherit other contracts, which is a pretty useful feature when you're dealing with this multi-stage computation that oracles will provide, the ability to parse different data feeds. Now, Chainlink Network in and of itself has 30 independent node operators, many of which also have extensive experience as Tezos validators as well, interestingly enough, which Tezos touts as an advantage for seamless and secure integration of Link as the chain Oracle provider. So pretty set up to do this fairly efficiently, fairly well. Now, Tezos prides itself on being a reliable and mission critical blockchain, which ideally is going to be suited for financial applications. And by bringing Chainlink and Oracle services to the platform, Tezos says this will allow them and allow their developers to rapidly build out their DeFi ecosystem. Well, I'm not really into rapid building of DeFi, but hey, more power to you. Now, stable coins, we cover a lot. They're already on uh, under development on the Tezos chain, including their flagship stable coin, USD Tez. And it's expected that adoption of Chainlink is going to be a pretty big step for them in getting this actually launched in other fiat pegged assets. All right. Now, the co-founder of Cryptonomics uh, spoke in, I think it's this. I always mispronounce the name, but it's uh, Vshock, I believe, co-founder of Tezos said right here, stable coins are essential to get on chain to get an on chain economy going on Tezos, right? Uh, and you know, overall, pretty positive 
about the launch. Uh, they go on to say some more positive things about uh, about Chainlink, how you know it's secure and reliable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, Tezos developers are also going to be looking to develop other financial services that are going to be powered by Chainlink's Oracle data. Uh, they want to provide insurance services to, for developing countries who don't have traditional financial products available to them, which is generally an impetus of what blockchain developers want to build, opportunities for the edge cases. Now, Chainlink's biggest role right now is Oracle on the Ethereum network, uh, where it does provide market data for around 30 different price feeds, which are absolutely crucial to the operations of all the decentralized finance dApps on that platform. Right. And again, according to Nazarov, the COVID pandemic hasn't slowed down development at Chainlink. According to him, they're busier than ever before as more projects continue to choose Link as their Oracle provider, which, you know, makes a whole lot of sense. Right. When I was at San Francisco Blockchain Week 2019, I spoke to a lot of I spoke to a lot of developers. I spoke to a lot of projects about, you know, what 2018 was like for them, right? Because most traders or most Bitcoin investors will say, oh, 2017 was so great. And then 2018 came along and the price go down. It was so terrible. Oh, I called my mom. It was so bad. Right. And uh, but, you know, when you talk to developers, they're like, yeah, 2018 was great, man. You know, price went way up. We made a whole lot of money. Our ICOs did very well. And we put our heads down and we built right? You know, we're developers anyway, so we like to generally stick around the house. So I don't really think, you know, again, not to be cliched, not to be cliched towards, uh, towards developers, but I mean, they tend to be, you know, there's a stereotype for developers, right? Where, you know, they sit in the lab and, you know, they drink a lot of Jolt Cola and they do a lot of developing and they smash it out. So it's like, you know, and sometimes like once a week, they're like, oh, hey, is it summer already? And they finally like open the window and it's like, ah, light, ah, right? Uh, so I don't really think a uh, pandemic lockdown really affected them. They probably looked around and they're like, what? I can't go to the grocery store right now. Who? Who said this? Right. Uh, now, yesterday, Casper Labs, who uh, I also had the um, I had the pleasure of interviewing their CEO at San Francisco Blockchain Week. We haven't uploaded that video yet, but that will be out and coming here pretty soon. Uh, but I spoke to, to Casper Labs CEO at San Francisco Blockchain Week, but Casper Labs yesterday announced their own collaboration with Chainlink. Uh, so they're going to make it also the Oracle provider for all the applications that are going to be developed on its blockchain as well. So uh, Casper Labs is actually going a step further than just using Link for Oracle provider. Uh, it is going to be the first blockchain platform to use Chainlink as an actual internal component of the core platform architecture. And at the rate things are moving at Chainlink, it's probably not going to be the last time that a blockchain actually decides to integrate it in such a fashion. So what do you guys think, right? Is this more bullish news on Link? Do we have any members of the Link army here on the channel? Be sure to tell us how hyped you are or excited or negative you are about Link in the comments section down below, as well as Tezos as well.